Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm No02. And thank you for watching this video. And if you've been joining us on this little journey, or joining me on this journey, the, the, the 30 of you who watch, uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. The plan for the night, for at least an hour, a little tight on time right now. See how it goes. I want to finish off the, the feelings cards here that we've been working on. I want to do another row of four. Very generic. Very generic. These are all like wordy, circumstantial stuff, right? So let's keep with that sort of theme here of like having the feeling cards so far being these weird, circumstantial, experimental, all over the placey sort of cards. Then we'll do some generic ones. And then we'll work on the logic cards. But I think for the sake of practice, for the sake of concept maybe, with the feeling cards, we wrote down the titles of the cards first. And then based off of the title, we tried to be inspired to write a card that made sense narratively with it. Let's do the opposite. We'll get rid of all the titles. All right, we'll get rid of all of them. Let's just make the cards first and then see if we can come with the title later. See how that feels, see how that goes. And I think maybe uh, the logic cards and that, because of that reason, will feel instinctually more distinct. We'll feel more distinct. We'll feel different because <laughs> the process of designing them was different. I don't know if that's a thing or not. I don't know if that's a thing or not, but we're going to try doing that. Let's finish these off. We have fear surprised still. Fear surprised. We have a little bit of, a little bit of sadness to do. And then I was hoping just like to do like this. Line is Bolden, but not centered. We'll just do it like emotion, right? Working title, working title. And I was just thinking, like, what are some like generic foundation cards that are really good in general? So I was thinking, like, uh, thinking like a plus two understanding. Oh god, how do you spell cycle? <laughs> cycle one. All right, cycle one. That's not bold. Be bold. Cost three. We need to copy our spaces. Spaces get shorter and shorter every time. DP1. And I was thinking that's what understanding draw one. Are these cards the same? Does one card cost more than the other? Right? Or do they both cost three? I think sort of a sort of a balancing question here, right? With the, between these two cards, and I was just thinking maybe there's some sort of like foundational cards here, because I think if I'm going to define fun in a deck building game as drawing more cards, let's have a lot of cards that draw cards, right? I like I heard you like to draw cards and whatnot, right? And we can do something like uh, draw one. Oops. And we'll do something like this. Very standardy stuff. But could we do cycle two? Is this balance? Are these balance? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe cycle two should cost three. Maybe this, maybe the plus two cycle one should cost four. I don't know. But I think it's sort of like uh, we, we put the sense of balance 
right on a line here between these four cards. Okay, ah. And ah, ah is positive, right? Shocked, confusion, excitement. Here's my initial thought with confusion. Here's my initial shot with confusion. Shuffle your hand. Uh oh. Here's a new idea for confusion. This is weird. This is weird. <laughs> here's my here's my new thought. Shuffle your discard pile face down. Turn you may cards from either your deck or your face down discard pile. All cards Or to discard it into a new discard pile. No, this this can't work. This is this is too crazy. And what's the point of this? And what what too if you somehow like? No, this already this seems confusing. Confusing, confusing. <laughs> the idea is you get to potentially draw into some of your good cards that you've already played that are sitting in your discard pile by shuffling a new deck. So essentially you have two decks and you can pick and choose what to draw from. But of course at the end of your turn you would discard into a new discard pile per usual. You discard pile face down and place next to your deck. You now have two decks. <laughs> and either of them as normal. <laughs> I think this card is going to confuse people. Maybe that's the point. <laughs> Let's keep it. Let's be brave. Let's be brave. How, how good is this? <laughs> how how valuable is this? This is not a good card. This is not a good card. This is a weird card. <laughs> We'll come back to this. There's definitely a better way to write or make a card for confusion, right? Ah, shocked, excited. Shocked. What would be shocking in a deck building game? 
some sort of low percentage happening, right? My initial thought is, uh, my initial thought is each player reveals the most expensive card from their hand. Or everyone reveals a non-starter card in their hand. If your three foes cannot do a cool thing. I don't know. I don't know. Let's do fear. Let's do scared. Too scared. My idea is destroy the top card of your deck. Plus three understanding. Well, this is an unbelievably good card at the beginning of the game, right? But if we did destroy the top card of your... deck, gain understanding equal to its cost plus one. Crazy good still. In understanding equal to the destroyed cards cost plus one. Maybe we don't even need to do that. The plus one. In understanding equal to the card's cost. So in the early game, it's a semi-reliable means of destruction. In the late game, it's scary. Do that. How much does it cost? Ooh, let's, let's do three. Let's do three, I don't know. That's my feeling. That's my gut feeling on it. We don't have a lot of huge mega cards here. We got six with bitter. Excited. Anticipation. Right? Excited. Anticipation. Maybe it's just like, uh, maybe we keep this one a little bit simpler. Plus two understanding. You may put two cards from your discard pile on the bottom of your deck. There's a little bit of uh, anticipation. Maybe we can just do anticipation. Is that how you spell anticipation? <laughs> anticipation? 
I don't know. Don't at me. Maybe we'll make it four? Maybe we'll make it four, I think. Solid. It's a solid little card. Reliable. Speeds up your deck. Ah. Uh, in awe of something. Pure amazement. What does lonely do again? Fear or fear surprise? Their VP value, then discard them. We don't have any synergy here with the with the actual sad with the fear surprise card here. Well, I guess confusion technically has the potential to do so, depending on what is in your discard pile. And we are potentially manipulating what's in our discard pile with this card as well. Imagine, too, we discard... We discard them. And then we put them back. Okay, there's some synergy here. There's some synergy. We, we accidentally... We're, we're a game designer sometimes. We like to think we are. We like to pretend. We like to pretend. And what is, what is life? It just... Sorry, I hit the micro. What is life? But just one long pretending. What is life? What is time even? But, ah. My gut reaction here for ah is playing a card from the lineup. And you're in awe. You, you pick, obviously, the most powerful card. And you're in awe of it. I don't know. I don't know. But let's look at the, the top two cards of your deck. Can understand it equal to their VP values? Then discard them. Then discard them. Uh hmm. -huh. Fear surprise. Fear surprise. What have you? Ah. Uh, think, think with me, people. Into your mind palace. Say hello to Benedict. Berbatch. And think. Think about your mind, palace. How about this? <laughs> oh, this is a weird one. You may put any number of cards from your discard pile into the lineup. Gain one card with cost equal to or less than cost of cards you added. Or <laughs> do we need an or? Do we need it do we need an or? Cause this feels very circumstantial. This feels like This feels like already, unless we do something to give this card some other sort of functionality, this feels like this feels like a cost one VP one sort of card here. 
Is it good, though? Do we care about this? The idea is we can, in a sense, make a grab for, a, like, a power card. Make a grab for a power card in some way or another. Maybe we get maybe we just give this retain. And you're in awe. You pay homage almost. You pay homage. Get that super sweet power card retain. Is that too good though? You're guaranteed to hit it eventually, but you sacrifice you sacrifice uh average power for potential burst power by having by trading in your sort of like a handful of cards for one big card. Let's try it out. Should it cost one though? With the retain now. Cards that cost one and, and do a thing, it's it's not a choice, right? You just sneak it in. You're guaranteed to purchase it if you have any extra any extra resource at all. But how many times do you use it in a game? But the way we have retain set up currently, there is no repercussion to purchasing purchasing this card. So long as you keep floating it in your hand, right? And you, and in theory, you could float this card forever in hand. We might need to rework the retain concept. Maybe the cards that are retained have to be played first on the next turn. I don't know. I think class four. And I think this will be a good example of, of, of how we think about retain, the keyword retain here, because like if I blocks the bottom. This might be broken with retain, possibly. Like the person who purchases this card will eventually will have the potential to just buy or gain literally all of the good power cards in the deck. No say. No say. But we'll leave it as is for now. We're experimenting. Okay, lonely. For sad, what's the, it's just sad, right? It's as I said. You may retain this card. They retained for now. And if there's any other shenanigans with retain, we can add text to it. We can do something like this. If you have the most... Sad cards. Plus three understanding. And then we'll do a if not. Plus two understanding. Simple, simple, right? Clean, simple, but still encourages you to go down a particular path. I like it. And we'll have it cost three. So it's on par at the very least, plus a bonus. But it encourages you to, to build, it encourages you to build a particular deck or to invest a little bit into something that you may not have considered before. Potentially, a card that potentially helps guide the player, right? Same thing with Melancholy.
depressed, guilt, the sad emotions. Not very good, are they? Quite saddening. Maybe we have enough enough uh, synergize with the sad cards themselves. Not super sure. Guilt. Not super sure here. Nothing's, nothing's, nothing's coming to mind immediately here. But uh, guilt. Man, time freaking flies. It's been 25 minutes already? How can this be? How can this be? We've only made... F I, think, I think the logic cards will go faster. Just because I think if we're just making up a bunch of cards to some degree like just like like let's just make some baseline solid cards reliable that might potentially go faster we, we might even just mimic these four cards right here and it's like these four cards will be reflected in all of the card types let me guilt will synergize with other There we go. We got guilt. We got guilt. Untap two other emotions. And tap. Tap one. Sad. Two to one ratio. And I think too, the way the card of the emotions need to read, right, is that uh I think I'll need to say When tapped, right? Because I just I just wanted to be clear that for this card here, when we tap our one sad sad card here, we still trigger the effect. So we still get the we still get the typical effect of drawing a card, but also get to untap these other two emotions. And tap two other emotions. You tap a sad. You draw a card. So you're guaranteed to draw a card here, but you're forced down the path of having a sad card. Let's say that this costs three. Say this cost three, and then we'll say not. Oops, oops, get out of here. Cannot untap star cards with this. I don't know if that, if that needs to be said. Does it? Need, does this need to be said? Let's get. Let's not even say it. Let's not even say it. And if somebody wants to untap two sad cards and then tap one, <laughs> then so be it. Let them do that. Let them eat cake or whatever. Right. So the very least is that this is a guaranteed tap of a sad card. Overall, in this turn, 
you will, uh, will end up untapping three emotions. And now depressed. The final emotion. Let's get out of here. Depressed. What is depressing in a deck building game? <laughs> but it's still beneficial for the player to, to utilize and tap into. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Gotta get out of these motions. Get out of our own head here. Maybe we can do this. Reveal the top card of your deck and then put it on the bottom of your deck. Repeat until you reveal a card that costs one or greater. We'll add some we'll add some understanding to it. The sad cards are cheap. <laughs> the sad cards are cheap. I guess the sad emotions are also cheap. And this synergizes with the sad emotion card in that you can potentially set up what's on top of your deck. But also, too, if you put a bunch of Basically, it's you're putting you're putting a bunch of starter cards, right, on the bottom of your deck. That's essentially what this is. Put a bunch of starter cards in the bottom of your deck. What if you? What if this is the very first card you purchase, and you don't purchase anything else, and then you just play this card, and you what you repeat forever? We do this in the bottom of your deck, face up, hard or greater, or your entire deck is face up. Well, that's confusing now because you might confuse it with your discard pile. But the idea would be then you get to know what, what card is next. You get to see what card is on top of your deck at the moment. I think I think it sort of breaks the rule of the face up face down thing. We'll get rid of this. Maybe we'll just get rid of this. But we're keeping confusion. <laughs> we're keeping confusion in its discard deck breaking mechanics. So 
went back to the drawing board, depressed. No, say, it's got me. It's got me. Oh, goodness. Stretch, if you're watching, stretch. Drink your water. And whatnot. This is it. This is our one barrier, and I will not leave. We will die. We'll die on this hill here. Rest. What could it be? What could it be? <laughs> Maybe it's just this. Maybe it costs one. It's worth one VP. And it gives plus one understanding. Because <laughs> everybody gets a little depressed and everyone can afford this card. And do we learn much from being depressed? Not really. Not really, but we learn a little bit. Maybe <laughs> this is the card. This is the game. This is the game, maybe. Heck it. We'll leave it as is. We'll leave it just like that. It works into the sort of theme of all of the sad cards being unbelievably cheap for the most part. Yeah, let's leave it at that. There you go. Those are our feeling cards. Are there enough of them? Not really, but enough to begin, right? We got 4, 8, 12, 16. We got 16 cards. We'll leave it at that. We got 4, right? 8, 12, 16. We'll probably need more, but down here we'll do the... All right, what did we do? We did a the draw, drawn cycle. All right, we'll do the uh, plus two understanding. Cycle one. Right, right, with the plus one understanding, draw one, and we'll do our draw one. And our cycle too. Man, a little foundation here. A little foundation. Just to have things happen and popping off and drawing cards and doing cool stuff. And doing cool stuff. Okay, maybe we have a plus two understanding. What if it costs one? 
BP zero? Huh? Huh? Good for accelerating your early game, but actually has no contribution to your end game chance of winning. Out of how you play it in the in the in the game. Maybe. Maybe. We can do stuff like uh, draw one. Let's do cycle one. Then draw one card. It'll cost four. Nice, nice. Does a thing, does a thing. And we can do a Put a feelings card. Baby's making noise. Red alert. Red alert. Baby's making noise. I think at once upon a time I had a template for for making cards so that when I print them out they're like they fit nicely into the sleeves and uh and had the had a showed how long they can be. I did not use that template. Maybe I'll dig it out somewhere once we're all done with the card design here. Good, seems good. Balance, balance. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. We're not operating that way. And we can have a simple uh, plus three power. Right, just a simple card. Bang for your buck. All right, simple card, bang for your buck, sort of th sort of dealio. We also don't have any destruction cards. Hmm. Hmm. Or hand. No. No. Keep true to it. We'll worry about it later. There's no destruction cards. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do it here.
super solid card. Everyone would love to buy that card. Let's make some big cards. We're making a bunch of little little weak cards here. We can do like a uh You can do a cycle too. A message. Okay, cycle two. We can do cycle two cards that you discard this turn. Oops, nope. You may put cards. You may put you may put cards that you discard this turn on the on the bottom of your deck instead. During your turn, you may put cards you discard on the bottom of your deck instead. Giving you the opportunity to potentially set up to cycle three. Two cycle three. We'll make it cost four. GP one. Not quite the heavy hitter card that I was thinking of, right? And do uh Gain the left. No, let's not do left and right because people will be sitting around the table. Gain the card. Closest to the main deck in the lineup. You moved, scared the crap out of me. Gain the. the Gain the card closest to the main deck in the lineup. Plus understanding. Well, to its Cost is too. Is this too RNG heavy? I think we got to make it expensive. Cost seven. VP one. So it's low. It's low on the VP side of things for cost efficiency to VP value. But potentially a huge swing that turn. Huge swing card. What if you get? It's like it's like uh, it's like a this is like a feast or famine card. Right, if you get a crappy card, then you get 
Maybe we do equal to its VP value. Equal to its, I think it's gonna be more consistent, equal to its VP value. Still a feast for famine concept. You get a card that costs two VP. It's still plus two power. That's a super solid card. We'll leave it as is. That card scares me. It's too powerful. We have power. Power is the terminology used in DC deck building game. This is really, really good. One of my favorite deck building games. And uh, it's just so clean and crisp, right? Plus power. We're sticking with understanding for now, though. But hell, we might just replace all this with power and say, screw it. Don't really matter. Here, one more row. One more row. Let's make another, let's make another big costing card, right? All right, let's do like a Another plus three power. Got some text on it though. We also need more keywords. We don't have a whole lot of keywords going on here. A lot of like put cards on top of your deck. Is this worth being slightly one more than maybe this will be VP two though? There you go. There you go. This could be we did, we did power again on the last card. There's a whole slew of just like reveal. Reveal the top card of your deck. It's a if it's a feeling card. Draw it. Do we make this six? I'll make this plus three. I'll make it plus two VP again. I don't know. I'm not super pleased with these cards. We can do a reshuffle mechanic.
your turn of drawing a new hand. You may cards from your discard pile and shuffle them into your deck. Something like that, something like that. We also, too, might just need to, like, I maybe we design cards in, in terms of just, like, we're doing them by type, right? By card type for our, for our game here. But, uh... Yeah, at some point, we need to, we might need to categorize the cards just by something else, by what they do. Just to get a better picture of what it looks like. But maybe just play testing is gonna is gonna yield what it feels like. My play testing is just gonna yield what it feels like good enough. Plus four power? No. Undo. I think it's like a wombo combo card. Big old fat wombo combo. We'll think of that somewhere else. Maybe that maybe that'll be in creativity. There was another card that we had that that was destroy, right? It was just plus one. Destroy card. Cost three. That's all enough. I think that's good enough. And I think here I have to call it. I have to call it. I did want we just sort of busted these out as fast as possible here. Not super duper pleased. This is gonna be the bulk of the game, right? It's just trying to figure out what the heck is fun. Maybe we need to just have like, uh, right? Like we look at this and just like see the, the this is the foundation. These are the sort of the boring cards. Maybe we just need to like have like a, a setup like this card gives plus two and that's all it does and that's what it costs. This card gives plus three. That's all it does and that's what it costs. All right, set up like a stronger foundation of like what cards cost for what they do, and then we'll sprinkle in in between once we have that foundation. All the cards that do the weird stuff. Uh, we're going to have to call it here. This is good enough. We'll move into creativity. Next. But, uh, I, I mean, what are we, we're four hours in? Five hours in to working on this game now? Five hours in. Maybe we'll want to get 16. Right, we have four, eight... So we'll have 16, three card types with 16 cards each. Maybe we'll want to do 20, 20 each. Still don't know if we're going to have a fourth card type or not. We have a main deck of 60 cards at the very least, right? Maybe we want 100 cards total. Maybe 60 is good enough. Because we also need to make follower cards too, right? We still need to make follower cards. So we would do 16 of these. And these cards might also... Right, some of them I think will not go into your main deck, and some of them will go into your deck. 
It'll be a blend of it. So 16 here or 20 here. Let's do 20 each. That's the goal. So at the very, very least, we're going to have three card types for 60 plus the followers for 80 plus the emotion cards and plus starter cards. And that starter cards will go fast. But we still need to come up with if there's a bad card or not, right? Weakness card, a wounded card. And we'll call this good. We'll call this good, though. Five hours into it, and uh, I think we're maybe... I mean, my goal is to get it done around eight hours. So hopefully we're three hours away from getting to a point where I can actually start printing cards out and playtesting it and seeing how it feels and seeing what the main deck needs, what of these weird wild cards work or don't, and things like that. And we can start making some real decisions as, as far as the design goes and things like that. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you in the future.